Today, we're going to be working in Strive, talking, talking about the data that you can get from Strive and how you can connect that to actions in your district, things that you want to accomplish, things that you need to do. How can you use the data to help you make those decisions? On the webinar today, I am Paige Parker, one of the training and implementation specialists. And I just waved to y'all. So even though you're not seeing me, just know you got to wave. Also with me is Alicia Thomas. Hello, how are you guys doing? Alicia's also on the training and implementation team. And hopefully Joel will be jumping back in in just a second with some of the stormy weather across the state. We're having a couple of issues. Um, he keeps getting booted out. So Joel is our digital learning coordinator and I think he'll be back in a few minutes. In the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So those of you who have questions or who have comments to make, if you will use the Q&A window. So in your bar about the webinar, you'll have a button that says Q&A, has two little talk bubbles there. You can go there and post questions and we'll be checking that window and trying to monitor the questions as they come in. If you have questions that are about something other than today's topic, we're gonna to ask that you send us an email to training at edgeforia.net. Um, when we have our questions coming in that are off topic, it's a little hard for us to stay focused. So if you could save those for email and use the Q&A window just for questions about today's session, we'd appreciate that. And I'm, I'm hoping all the hands going up are y'all waving back at me. So good afternoon, I'm waving again. Um, all right, so today's objectives, we're going to learn about different report options that you have in Strive. We're gonna access the data collected from the evaluation year in several different formats, and then hopefully help you find the right report or reports for your needs. Because sometimes you need multiple reports to find different kinds of data and collect everything that you need. So that's what we're gonna be looking at today. To help you find the right report, we have a, a an article in our online help guide. Joel has created a short link for you up here. So you can get to directly to that report by going to bit.ly forward slash three X capital L two I capital H M. That link will take you directly to this report or you can go to our online help guide, go to the strive button, strive reports and suggestions for running strive reports. I'm gonna click here and take you into that article. And this is what it will look like. So we have all of the different reports listed in the left-hand column. And then in the middle column, we have suggested run times. And you'll notice like for the first report, run it shortly after goals are due, and then run it again before teachers leave at the end of the year to make sure that all the goals are marked complete so that they'll get archived. So there may be more than one runtime and you may have additional runtimes other than our suggestions here that work for your district. We also in the third column have some of the purposes for this goal. Um, it can be, some of the, the reports can be used for multiple things. So we tried to list out some different reasons why you might want to go to that goal. We're gonna talk, or to that report, excuse me. We're gonna talk about some of these reports today, but we don't have time to talk about every single one of them. But we did want you to see that all of these different report types are out there. And you can look at this uh, little chart and try to find what are the things you're wanting to do? What is the purpose you're trying to accomplish? And then see what report we have for that. Um, or just go click on each of the reports. When you go to one of the report titles, it's gonna take you to an article elsewhere in our online help that will tell you more about how to run that report and what that report does. So it'll give you some more details about the report if you click on that, the title of the report in the left-hand column, because those are all hot links. So hopefully coming here, figuring out what it is that you're wanting to accomplish, looking at the purpose and finding the goal that matches that, or the report that matches that purpose will help you gather some of the data that you need to gather. I'm gonna jump in with the first report that we're gonna talk about today, which is the document analysis report. And this report is going to help you find averages for teachers on either domains or as a whole. You can find averages for appraisers. You can find averages by dimension. So you're going to get all of the data into an Excel spreadsheet that you can use to create whatever averages you need. You can use that data to look for skew 
and hopefully identify some causes of that skew. You can determine calibration needs and next steps because you will be able to compare appraisers, getting those averages and comparing the appraisers using this report. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit about reporting for TIA, and I'll show you an example of our document analysis compared to a document reporting template from TIA. And then you can also, because this report goes into a spreadsheet, you can create whatever charts and pivot tables will help you to further analyze the data. You would go into your Strive system and go to reporting over on the left-hand side. And the first report in the list of appraisal reports is the document analysis. The document analysis report pulls per document. So you can pull a report for all of your observations that use the same template. You can pull a report for all of your summatives that use the same template, but it doesn't combine multiple documents. So I can't put observations and summatives together in one document analysis report. I would pull two separate reports and compare the data from those two different documents. Once I pull that report, I'm going to want to print it as a spreadsheet. So I'm gonna tell it to create a spreadsheet, not to do the counts, but to just print the data to a spreadsheet. And it's gonna give me all a field for every question and it's gonna fill that data in. So I have a sample here um, to the left. You'll see I'm starting with column F, but to the left would be my teacher names and their subjects and all of that information. But what I'm really looking for here is the results. And so it's gonna show me the ratings for each one of those dimensions for each one of the observations that was done. Or I think in this case, I pulled a summative report. From here, I can look at this data and I can sort it in a variety of ways, um, but I'm gonna go over and make it numeric. So I want to have that in, in the form of a number. I'm gonna pop up an example of my spreadsheet here and just show you where this came from. So when I downloaded my spreadsheet, here's what it looks like. This is what we saw a screenshot of on that slide. I've got all of the teacher information in there. I've got the appraisers and I've got all of my ratings. Um, I made a copy of that. And in my copy, I went in and highlighted all of my ratings. So I would highlight all of these that are alpha ratings right now, and I would do a find and replace. So control H would do a find and replace, and I would replace all of my distinguished with five, my accomplished with four, proficient three, um, developing two, and improvement needed would be one. So it's gonna be five quick find and replaces after I have highlighted all of these um, alpha ratings, and it would replace them all with numeric values. So I did that and I have my numeric ratings here. With my numeric ratings, I can do all kinds of things in Excel. Um, I can come over here and get a, an average. So I could come over to this first row and say, I want to add a formula. It's going to be an average. It automatically will average everything in the rows. So right now I have an average of domains two and three for that teacher. And if I pull that down, that will give me an average for each of my teachers for domains two and three. If I had all four domains in my spreadsheet, I have removed some from this particular version, but if I had them all in here, I could do it for all of them. Or I could say I want to do the them separately. So I want to clear the contents of that. I'm going to add in another formula. This time I'm going to say I'm going to change that H3 to be M3 and that's going to give me the average of just domain three. Again I could pull it down and get my domain three average and I could insert a column right here and do the same thing to get my domain two average. So I could do averages by domain here if I wanted to. Um, I have also added in a filter. So I could come up here and say, I want to just put a general filter on this uh, top row so that I can filter by appraiser. And I can see just one of my appraisers 
and all of their ratings, I could then get averages for that appraiser, um, either by dimension or as a whole. And I can use that data then to compare my appraisers for the purpose of determining inter-rater reliability. So I can see what are the, the variances between evaluations with these three that I have selected here. Um, in the spreadsheet, I can select as many as I, as I want to. I only have three right now, but I could put all of the appraisers at my campus or all of the appraisers at my district into a single worksheet. And then I could get my averages. Um, once I'm looking at those averages, I can um, highlight that information and come up to the top and say, I want to insert a chart. And I can pick whatever kind of chart I want, whatever I think is gonna be helpful to me. And that's gonna give me the data that I want to have visually. And so I can tell by looking at this chart, they're actually fairly close. So there's you know, some skew, there's some variation between the different evaluators and how they score each of these dimensions that may be explainable based on the um, appraisees that they have in their group. I would have to look a little more deeply to figure that out. But one thing that I do notice is that all of them are a little on the high side. So if I'm looking at the total, the, the total average, I would expect to see at least some below the middle. And there's nothing here that's below the middle, nothing here below 3.5 as an average. So maybe everybody is grading a little bit on the high side, or maybe we just have a really exceptional faculty at Edgeforia ISD. So you have to be able to look at that data and look at the other information that you have about your users to make those determinations. But all of this information comes from that um, document analysis report that I'm gonna pull, convert to numeric values, and then manipulate to get whatever additional information that I need. The last thing that I want to show in terms of the data and the document analysis report is um, if you're collecting data for TIA, for teacher incentive allotment, the bottom part of the screen is a data analysis report. It's like what we looked at before. I have all of the fields about my teachers, about my appraisers, and then I also have the the scores or the ratings, which I have converted to numeric values. The top is from cohort B's data file download. Um, each cohort, the spreadsheet, the reporting spreadsheet or reporting template has looked a little bit different. Some things have changed from time to time. So if you are in one of the later cohorts, your template may have a few fields that are different from this. But what I wanted to show is that um, not all of the data that TIA wants comes through or from Edgeforia. For example, you know, we have the first name, last name, and we can have an ID number in our report. So down here is, is first name, last name, and ID number. If you have your system set up to bring that ID number from your employee information system into Edgeforia, then that can be there as part of this report. We also have campus name, although it's down here, you'd have to reorder the fields a little bit. Um, we have the main content area and subject, uh, subject area and grade level. We have those in our report. That's something that the appraiser puts in when they start the document. But the things that come from your employee information system that are not in Edgeforia include um, the, the TEA ID of the educator, Actually, you can have one of these ID numbers coming into our system, but only one. So the other one would come from your system. We have the campus name, but we don't have the campus ID number. So that's something that you would have to bring in from your employee ID, ID uh, information system. We don't have this information here, the eligible teacher group, the educator certification, or employment with an LEA. That's stuff that is in your employee information system and not part of Edgeforia, so you would need to bring that in. And then we also do not have the uh, service ID for student growth or the appraiser's ID. We have the appraiser's first and last name, but we don't have their ID number. 
So even pulling this report, you get a great deal of the data and you get all of the ratings for each of the teachers, but there are still some fields that TIA is going to ask for that won't be part of data that's in Eduphoria. And so you'll need to do some, some combining of data from your employee information system and Eduphoria to get all of those fields. Okay, yes, I'm going to talk about the goals details report, um, which we have recently updated to add the portfolio data. So let's go over to the goals details report. So this report pulls data for both the professional goal and the student growth goal. So for the professional goal, you can use this report to look for commonalities among goals and dimensions. You can also look at this report for groups of teachers for coaching, and you can also plan professional development based on the needs that you're seeing within this uh, report. So as I mentioned, you can also use the goals details report to pull data on student growth goals. So you can use this report to determine appropriateness of the student growth goal when your teachers are writing this. Um, you're going to also see how to group teachers for coaching, how to plan um, your professional development based on their needs, and plan appraisal schedule to evaluate during the prep uh, for class periods and so forth for student growth goal. And we can slide back to that other um, slide, the previous one, to show how to access that. So yeah, so when you go into um, the, the student growth goal, you're going to see there at the top where it shows uh, student growth goal and then also pro uh, professional goal. And you're going to click on which one that you would like to um, access and then also set your dates and do that and submit your report. So when you submit the report, it's going to come up as an Excel spreadsheet for you to um, be able to look at that data and manipulate that data as well. And that's also for the student growth goal. You'll see there on below the student growth goal where you can add the portfolio um, to that data to be able to look at that also. Right. And one thing to note, we were talking about uh, page, the percentages. What was that one thing that we were mentioning about uh, the percentage with this report, what we have to do for a teacher uh, or principal? The percentage comes from the, um, the portfolio, the student portfolio. So the, the student growth goal report pulls all of the data from their goal, including the TEKS that they're, in, um, that they're focusing on, their skill focus area, their success criteria, all of those things from the student growth goal. But to get the percentages, that comes from the student portfolio, which is a part of our student growth goal process. Every teacher that has um, students rostered to them will have a button at the top right of their student growth goal where they can create a student portfolio. And that's where they can develop the milestones. You can follow the, the training tracker, um, for the tracker that is used for the state's SLO model. And you can use those uh, descriptors that they have, typical, above typical, well above typical, or you can create your own descriptors but you would create that rubric where you would um, write out the descriptors of what a student looks like at the beginning of the year, what a student looks like at the end of the year, and that's how you would rate their growth. And that growth would be either they did not grow, they met expected growth, or they exceeded expected growth. And then the report takes the met and exceeded students from the portfolio and creates that percentage because what TIA is asking for is the percentage of students from each teacher's student growth goal or SLO that met or exceeded expected growth. So that's where that number comes from. You will not see that data if you're not using the student portfolio piece of our student growth. Okay, uh, the last thing that we wanted to talk about today is appraisal analysis, um, which is a little bit different from our reports. It's a separate feature. Um, but I can go into my system and I am going to do that right now. So I'm going to go into Strive. And one of the questions that I saw earlier was about where the reports are coming from. So when I'm in as an appraisal administrator or an appraiser, so principals and assistant principals, depending on the roles and rights that your district has assigned, should have access to reports. And when I click over there, I will see the appraisal reports. And this is where we were finding the reports that we were showing. Um, I showed the document analysis report, first of all, 
where I would select the one report and then I would export it to a spreadsheet. And then Alicia showed the goal detail report, which is right here. And so the goal detail spreadsheet, you can either run for professional goals or you can run for the student growth goals. And if you run it for student growth goals and you're using portfolios, you can click to include that portfolio data. There is one note up here that tells you that the results of the report are based on when the user created their goals. So this is gonna pull from your current instructional calendar. If you're looking for goals that were created before this date, then you will need to change that date to go back to when they created the goals because that's how it finds the data and pulls it into the system. So hopefully that answered the question about where you find the reports. And then um, what I wanna talk about a little bit is the appraisal analysis. And the appraisal analysis is a different way of looking at data. It can be used also to determine inter-rater reliability. It can be used for analyzing specific dimensions and domains or analyzing different documents or comparing groups. Um, those groups can be users on a campus like English teachers versus math teachers, or it can be different campuses or feeder patterns. So I'm gonna go now, instead of going to appraisal reports, I'm going to appraisal analysis and this is where you would set up what you want to look at. If I were looking to do calibration, I would want to say I'm going to pick the t-test framework. I could pick all of the domains and dimensions, or I could pick just a single domain. I'm going to pick which document I want to compare. So I would pick my summatives, or if it was earlier in the year, I might pick my observations. Again, I'm going to select my dates. And my system has already rolled over to a new instructional calendar. So if I wanna look at last year's data, I would need to come up here and change those dates. So I would, I would wanna go back in, in time to get this past year's data. And then I can generate different groups. So for my first group, I might come down to my list of appraisers and pick one appraisal, appraiser who will be in group, represented by group one. And then I would add a new group and pick a second appraiser. And that would be my group two appraiser. And I would do the same thing for group three. And what I will end up with is a comparison of those three different appraisers. Now in the document analysis, when I showed you how you could pull that, pull those averages by appraiser and you could have multiple appraisers in there and, and we made a little chart, I can do as many appraisers there as I want to. Um, as many as I can fit in my graph. In appraisal analysis right now, we only have the ability to do three groups. So you would be comparing three appraisers at a time to determine that inter-rater reliability. But I can see some, some deep variance here. And so this might tell me that at least these three appraisers are not well calibrated. I might wanna look at each one of them compared to some others and see, you know, is the calibration problem just between these three or is it um, more widespread among all of the appraisers on my campus? So I could run this information and, and it would show me each one of the dimensions. This is only showing one right now. I'm looking at 2.1, but I'd be able to scroll through and see each of the dimensions and how my appraisers um, compare on each of them. In addition to looking at appraisers, I can just look at the data about um, the dimensions and analyze the dimensions. So in this case, I pulled domain two or 2.1 is the dimension, specific dimension that I'm looking at. And I'm looking at my entire district. So this is as an average in my district, we've got a pretty good looking bell curve. So that's, that's a good sign that I have the kind of evaluations that I'm wanting to see. But up at the top, I have some additional information. I have the goals that were tagged by my teachers with this particular dimension, and also the professional development earned by my teachers that was tagged to this dimension. So right now I have 24% of my teachers who have a goal related to dimension 2.1, but 35% of my teachers who, has, who have attended professional development. That's more teachers attending professional development than wrote goals, which is fine. But if these two were reversed and I had a higher number of teachers 
who had tagged this as a goal and a smaller number of teachers who had actually earned credit or attended professional development in that area. I might wanna look at that. Why did the teachers not attend professional development in an area where they wrote their goal? Did we offer enough? Do we need to offer more next time? So I can get some information by looking at appraisal analysis as to what was our performance in that area? What were our goals and our professional development offerings? How did they relate to that? And did that high number of teachers attending professional development in this dimension have an impact on our scores here? Because the scores look pretty good. So I can look at one particular dimension or I can look at a whole domain and see all of that information together. Another thing that I can do with appraisal analysis is to examine my different documents. How am I getting data out? What does it look like in the different documents? So when I run a document analysis on dimension 2.1, which is what I'm looking at here, and I include both walkthroughs and the observation, I'm seeing a walkthrough document on the left and the observation on the right. Now, when you run this yourself, you'll see the walkthrough at the top and the observation at the bottom, but that doesn't really fit the format of my slide. So I put them side by side, but you will see this data in a comparison on the same screen. Um, what I wanna be able to figure out is, does this walkthrough data help prepare me for this observation data? Um, I can figure some things out if I do a little work, a little math. If I come over here and look at the walkthrough, I can tell that it, this is a walkthrough format, a template that has check boxes where you check off what you saw, um, all students demonstrated or some students demonstrated. You check which one is appropriate for that particular area. Everything that has a five is in the distinguished level. Everything that has a four in front of it would be rated as an element of accomplished. Everything that's a three would be proficient. Twos would be developing one's improvement needed. Because those are set up that way, because the, the questions were created with the numbers, I can tell that if I averaged all of these right here and compared it to this number right here, I would be able to tell, you know, how did they look at the walkthrough time? How do they look at observation time? Because this is my distinguished and these top four combined would be my distinguished. So I'm looking at two, four, five, six out of 129 here. I would have to look a little bit closer to figure out what my percentage is, but it's probably pretty close to that. That's a little more work to figure out what this looks like. If I want to have them look exactly the same, I want to have this same bar chart for both a walkthrough and an observation, then I need to look at the format of my walkthrough document. And maybe it needs to be a matrix question so that I'll see the same kind of display of data that I do in my observation. If this is okay and I can do the math and I can figure it out, then that's great. So it gives this gives you the ability to look at the data from two different types of documents side by side to determine if your process is working for you and giving you everything that you need. And then the last example that I have is that comparing different groups. And I would set it up the same way that I was showing you where I selected an individual to be a group. But maybe if this was um, a, a feeder pattern, I would choose um, all the elementaries, middle schools and high schools that feed into one group would be the salmon color. And then I would choose all the middle schools, elementaries, and high schools that feed into another group as the goldenrod color. So I would have three different groups. I could have multiple campuses because it's three different feeder patterns. Or maybe we have three assistant superintendents who supervise campuses, and I would do one group for each, a super, each assistant superintendent and the schools that they are responsible for. I could also go in because in appraisal analysis, I do have the ability to choose subjects. I could come over here and say, I wanna compare all of my teachers that are in English language arts in one group. And I want to pick another group that's gonna be all of my math teachers. And I'm gonna see if there are any differences between the way we're evaluating teachers in different subject areas or different grade levels. 
Um, so I can pull based on all of those different areas. I have grade levels over here, subject areas over here. So I can pull that information in and make my groups based on any of those kinds of, of those pieces of information in order to compare and see how things are across the board. Okay, so let's talk about help, the different ways that you can get help. One is, of course, attending these webinars. The other is inside of our applications, you can always access what we call our online help guide. Uh, we have different articles in there. And one of them, of course, we have our start and end of school checklist of uh, different articles about getting ready for the start of school. Uh, but our online help is available for you to access resources. We keep our articles pretty much updated as often as possible and putting information in there. And specifically for uh, Strive, if you are in the Strive help section, we have a, a whole section in there just relating to reports in Strive. So a lot of the information that we cover here is available inside of that section about the different reports. And those of you that were able to access that um, shortened URL or the link that was put in the Q&A, that article itself is about all the different reports that we have available and when to run them. We really wanted this webinar to be about what you should be seeing in your system when you are running reports. If you are not seeing this type of data, it could be your system is not set up properly. And either you or there may be someone else in your district who manages Drive and gets things set up. So I'm just going to say this. If, if you're not seeing the data you want to see or the data that you need to see, or if you're not seeing any data, uh, it could be that your system is not set up. So next week, this same time, we are doing a webinar called Begin with the End in Mind in Strive. And it's really for the people who manage Strive because we're going to show them how to set up Strive so that you can be effectively getting your data. Um, Joel, I do want to show one other thing. I'm going to jump over to our online help because a couple of people have said, they're having trouble with the bit.ly. So if you are, if you go to our online help guide, the very middle top button says training and webinars. You can click there and you will see upcoming webinars in the upper right. And here is the, the link to register. You click here to register for the one next week. Begin with the end in mind. Um, you also will see a link here to our YouTube channel. And it's also under on-demand videos. And when you go to the YouTube channel, you will find where we have posted previous webinars, the recordings of our webinars and our lunch and learns, and also recordings that are part of some of our articles all exist out on that YouTube channel. And you can get to it at the bottom of this page, but also when I go to training and webinars, you'll see video training on demand right here on the left and a link there to our YouTube channel. And that'll take you into the playlists, um, but you'll be able to see a, a full playlist here. We have a playlist for each one of our applications. And then we have a lunch and learn playlist. And I think in here somewhere we have a Wednesday webinar. There's our all webinars playlist. So you'll be able to find the webinars out there, or you can come up here and use this little magnifying glass to search for a specific thing that you're looking for. And I wanna point this out too. If you are on a video, like uh, just click on one of, click on that first one there that's listed. Uh, yeah, you can pause it. If you go down when you're watching our videos and you click show more, we break out all of the topics that we do by, it's called chapters. So you can jump ahead to a specific section. And uh, like you, when you click on like the blue part, it'll, it's going to jump ahead into that part of the video and start at that point. And another thing you can do is if you want to share a specific point in a video with anyone, you can right click on those blue links and then it creates the copy link address. And that link address will go to that specific moment in time in the video. Okay, so some that was you, a bonus. Yeah, some of you may have your own delivery system. Like I know some people are using Google Classroom for embedding video for professional development or they're using, um, 
something that we have called Strive eCourses. So you can embed using the codes that are time stamped also for your videos and put those in your own system. So you don't have to send someone the whole webinar, you can send them to a specific point. Thank you all for attending and dealing with um, our little technical glitches, uh, but we thank you for taking the time to join us. We hope you have a continued great summer and of course, a great rest of your week. Absolutely. Thanks for being here and we hope to see you next week.